he koko ngā whare kakitea, he koko ngā ngākau e kore e kitea. I roto i te rā whakaaro e hika mā te nāku tau katoa. Nau mai hoki mai anō ki te pai kōrero nei a tapatahi. Ki ko nei anō tātou matapaki ai ngā take nui o te wā. Kāti, welcome to Tapatahi. Thanks for joining us. We put your questions to decision makers, share your stories and perspectives, and keep you informed about COVID-19. And it's all about doing this together, so if you have a question or comment, please let us know. Well, coming up on today's programme, Farno are losing their homes as a result of COVID-19 financial strain. We speak with Ricky Halton in Kaitaia and Tommy Wilson in Tauranga about the pressure to house the newly homeless and some novel solutions. TV host chef and Hangi master Rewi Spragan brings us up to date on his plans to bring Hangi to the hungry in Alert Level 3. Taranaki, we say it's essential to install checkpoints at the northern and southern ends of the region. Debbie Ngārewa Pekka joins us. And we announce the winner of our $1,000 Fano video competition and the Wormsley Fano from Ngāti Kahungunu, Tainui and Ngāti Toa perform today's waiata. We're all in this together Once we know that we love We're all stars and we see that We're all But first, here's what you need to know in 30 seconds. Well, it's day 33 in lockdown, and at 11.59pm tonight, the country moves into alert level 3. There are nine new cases, four are confirmed, five are probable. Four of the new cases are linked to New Zealand's 16 clusters, and the others are all linked to other known infections. Another 24 people have recovered, which takes our new total of cases to 1,142. Of those cases, 125 are confirmed as Māori, 73 as Pacifica and 167 as Asian. Well, the COVID-19 financial crisis is forcing housing providers to take extreme measures to house whānau. In Kaitaia, Ricky Houghton of He Korowai Trust, he's been living at the Trust's premises since day one of lockdown, along with three kaimahi and 20 whānau. He's had to turn away others seeking shelter. In Tauranga, Tommy Kapai Wilson's Te Tuinga Whānau Trust ran out of accommodation two weeks ago until he turned to the RSA for help. Yesterday, Housing Minister Megan Woods announced an extra $108 million to help vulnerable people who need homes. To discuss this and their current situation are Tommy Wilson and Ricky Houghton. Tēnā kōrua. Morena, Jay. Morena, Ricky. Hey, brother. Hey. Morena. Morena. Uh... Ricky, let's begin with you. How will the extra money help you provide housing in the short term and hopefully in the long term? Yeah, I think Tina Kwe Tarana Tira Shane here, Miki Atu Kia Kwe, Mr. Fano Fanui, Miki Atu Tina to Miki Atu Kia Kwe Tahoe, Etami, Na Miki Kia Kwe. Um, I don't know how this camera's working, but. Uh, you look try... great, Ricky. You look great. <laughs> um, you know, so uh, uh, the hundred million dollars. Um, I would much rather see $100 million invested in Māori home ownership. Um, there's a lot of, um, um, uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice gesture, I think, um, but it's, it's, not a, it's not a solution. Um, it doesn't solve the problem. I think it just shifts it to beyond uh, where we are right now. And so I would um, dearly love to see $100 million invested into Māori home ownership and... Uh, and uh, that's where I'd like to see it. But um, he, uh, it's great that the government has done that. I think that um, getting them off, uh, getting the whānau into, uh, into some, any type of accommodation, I would rather see $100 million go to Marae. And uh, our whānau, they, but they say that um, we can't um, be um, responsible enough to keep our distance there, so we've got to go and stay in these place hotels. And that's that, Tommy. And we'll talk about that shortly, Ricky. Tommy, what does the extra money mean for you and the work that you're doing? Uh, it's a pretty easy equation, uh, Shane. Uh, more than a whānau, more than a Aotearoa and my bro, Ricky. Uh, for us, it's um, putting roofs over heads right now. Um, so as, as everyone might know, we, we ran out of rooms two weeks ago. Um, couldn't move anyone else anywhere else. So uh, we, we reached out to the RSA and uh, they came back with 22 rooms, which 
we will have filled by this weekend eight new families over the weekend and pretty much one a day. So uh, immediate problems to deal with right now are getting uh, everyone uh, under a safe roof and uh, being looked after. So that's the challenge immediately. I agree with Ricky long term. Yeah, let's start putting some whare for whānau all up and down this country. But at the moment, uh, we're just dealing with the crisis we have right on our, on our table right now. And it's morphing from the coronavirus into uh, extreme poverty. Tommy, talk to me about pre-COVID-19 days and current COVID-19 days and how much of the need has increased for housing in your area? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's probably the same everywhere else, but it's, it's just amplified. You know, um, what was lying underneath the, the carpet is now on top of the carpet. So uh, we uh, planned, uh, this is our fifth week and then lockdown, day 40 for me. I get to go home to my family tomorrow and see my new moko, which is going to be wonderful. Uh, but we had to strategize that long out. So information was key or the taiaha of knowledge, and that is still key now. We've got to be prepared now for what's coming and uh, for us or for me as the shepherd of uh, a whole team of 50 Uffy Angels working in five bubbles, uh, I must make sure that my staff is strong. So my focus is really on my staff because if they fall at the front line then uh, it domino effects behind it. So the key thing now is I had the luxury of time and that's the commodity uh, we don't have now. So everything I'm doing is for my, for my staff uh, to make sure that they're not flying solo, that they're strong uh, because if we thought we were busy before, uh, we've only just begun. Well, it's interesting you mentioned before, because, Ricky, housing issues, homeless issues are not new, right? COVID-19, if anything, has just shone a light on these issues that we've been uh, challenged with for some time now. If we look out from the current and more to medium to long term, you mentioned before around Māori home ownership, investing more money there. Is that a better solution, do you think? Yeah, um, it's the only solution. Um, the only people that are doing well off the poverty and the homelessness and the helplessness of Māori are all the landlords, uh, are, 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 you know, all the people that, uh, the, the lawyers that get the legal aid, the doctors that get the GRI subsidies, and the people that take but give nothing back to us as a people. Um, and so, uh, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the banks, the banks have to be uh, um, held to account. They're they're uh, uh, shutting our people down and turning them away because uh, they say they don't meet the bank's lending criteria, even though they have a blue chip guarantee from the government who says that they will insure them. So uh, there's something wrong with that picture. What they do is they charge, they charge our families premium uh, 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 penalty rates and interest rates, even though they have a government guarantee. So many of our families there uh, are missing out on opportunities to refinance their homes, uh, to bring their uh, affairs in order, uh, and they're being turned away. And so um, it's somehow or rather uh, the iwi or the government or, uh, 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 the you know, preferably the iwi because they are the ones with the financial might. They are the ones that can say to the, um, you know, even this money that the, that the, that the government's got uh, in trust pending settlement, um, put it with a bank that understands Māori um, and and don't deal with them. The, the, the banks are, are, holding, um, are holding our families to ransom. Uh, got people ringing up uh, all hours of the night to the families and scaring them. Um, they're saying to them things like, uh, uh, well, we used, to give you a, we used to give you 120 days. Now we're only going to give you 30 days to fix this out and then they're going to start the process. So they're holding our families to ransom, even though they have a blue chip. It's up to our, our iwi leadership to say to these banks, don't do that, or we'll shift our money across to somebody who understands our families. Mm. Tommy, you mentioned poverty, and homelessness obviously is a key contributor to, to uh, poverty. If we're to look to medium to long-term solutions... Uh, Ricky is talking about banks and focusing attention on banks to enable uh, our whānau to get into home ownership. What else is there, do you think, that would really make a difference? 
Yeah, I mean, Ricky's right. That is the silver lining in this long, dark cloud is for our people to have fun. But for, for, for right now, our, our focus is on we, we must prepare our, our, our families to become good tenants. Um, otherwise, you know, if, you just, if we're just throwing them in motels, we're actually adding to the problem, not solving it. So for us, uh, we have to equip, equip with them. A big focus is on budget. A big focus for us is on kai. Had to start with myself, you know, six Ks lighter since we've gone into budget. Um, you know, we, we need to be uh, taking it on. If we're talking about tikanga, what is the tikanga of our kai? Because if we look at the long-term problems, you know, health is right up there. While we're not good residents, you know, we're struggling on all fronts of health. So here's a wonderful opportunity while we've got them in lockdown, if we've got them in a, you know, if you could say a, a contained audience to start really, really uh, teaching this whole thing around what is the tikanga of our people? Is it kai? Is it manaki? Is it, uh, what are these things? And it's a wonderful opportunity. We're seeing our homeless now with more money in the bank than they've ever had. Why? No takeaways. So let's keep pushing that. You know, let's not fall back to picking up the Mickey D's and picking up the Burger King. And let's, you know, start growing our kai. We're, we're putting in gardens as many as we can. Start doing the things that our, our people survived on pre-colonial times, if we want to talk about that. Let's start in eating the kai that our, our 2.8. And that's a big start. Then we're ready to teach. You know, most of our fellows, they've been cooking in microwaves most of their lives, you know, to, to use an oven, to use... Um, buying kai, foraging for kai, catching kai in a net, growing their own kai and cooking their own kai. I think those are huge practical steps we can take now to you know, use that taiaha of knowledge and arm our people with those skills they need to become good tenants and own the whare that the brother uh, Ricky has already got a game plan for and we're, we're following you, brother. <laughs> Tommy, that's a great message to end our conversation on. Unfortunately, we are out of time, but I, I really sure. do want to thank you, Tommy and Ricky, for joining us this morning. This is a big kaupapa, and I'm sure we'll be talking about this same kaupapa again uh, very soon. Nō reira, tēnā rawa tu kōrua, kei aku rangatira, ngā mihi nui ki a kōrua. Kia ora, whānau. Stay in your bubble. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> nice message there, Tommy. Tommy Wilson and Ricky Houghton, of course. Well, Taranaki, we say it's essential to install checkpoints at the northern and southern ends of the Erohe as the country moves to alert level three. Ngā Tirua Nui Runanga chairperson, Debbie Ngārewa Pekka, she says rates of COVID-19 testing for Māori are so low in the region, they are particularly at risk. She also wants to boost iwi-led COVID-19 testing in Norohe, but ran into problems with testing supplies, which are controlled by the Taranaki District Health Board. Debbie Ngārewa Packer is with me now. Tēnā koe, Debbie. Tēnā koe, Shane. Debbie, why do you feel checkpoints are needed in your rohe when we move to Level 3? Well, I guess, you know, what we're contending with in, in Taranaki is not too dissimilar to Whanganui, where there's been under-testing, um, particularly for Māori. So, um, you know, I was asked, why aren't you putting in, in checkpoints at Level 4? Well, the simple answer is that everyone was effectively in lockdown. There wasn't um, confused messaging on what level three is going to look like. And our whanau don't do grey. So um, this strategy is about an and and. We are uh, working with the community to ensure both sides of our region are being checked for those that don't understand what level three travel should look like while we're pumping through testing of symptomatic and asymptomatic in, a, in an extremely strategic manner. So um, that's that's why it is, Shane. If, if there had been a higher uh, level of Māori testing, um, particularly in our vulnerable regions, maybe it wouldn't have been such an important call for now, um, but there hasn't been. So that's, that's our emphatic approach. And I do want to talk about testing shortly, but... On the logistics of setting up these checkpoints, and we know there's been a lot of criticism, right, levelled at those setting up checkpoints, what type of support do you have uh, for this move? So I guess um, when you talk about what type of support we have, um, for us, you know, it's, it's always been about wakapapa first and foremost. So we have our whānau that are supporting. We have, uh, as part of uh, getting ready for this process, we have been doing um, something really new for us in our tikanga, which is consulting with Pākehā. And it's a, an extremely interesting process because, you know, obviously there's more individualised um, consulting or checking on what views are. So we've spoken to 
a lot of our various uh, mayoral community leaders in the Pākehā community. We've spoken to churches and church leaders. We've spoken and sent out comms to federated farmers. Uh, and a whole lot of those that that um, we want to dispel this myth in legion that we're here to disrupt the, you know, the livelihood of Pākehā. That's not what we're here to do. Um, we've also worked really closely with police uh, and, you know, thanks to Willie Homaha, thanks to our regional police that have found out, you know, how we need to do this together as communities. We've uh, also organised traffic management plans. Uh, we've worked with a whole lot of contractors. So um, I guess we've done what we would do if we were running, you know, Iron Māori, if we were running uh, the Taranaki um, events kaupapa, if we were running Ngāti Rūni festivals. So we've got this experience logistically. Um, and that's what we've applied in, in this sense. It, it's sad that um, I think a lot of the rednecks have used this for politicking or disrupting the massive Māori response that's been going on across across the mm. nation. And I think, um, you know, it is what it is, but we've, we've done some extensive um, lobbying and advocating for total call. That sounds good, Debbie. Sorry to interrupt you, but we're running out of time, and I do want to just tackle mm. the issue of testing. Uh, we understand you've mm. been quite critical of the testing, the low testing levels in your region to date. What is your message this morning about what needs to be done to address that? Well, I think the first thing is that we've been really fortunate to have access to Dr Rawari, um and Jansen and Dr Bloomfield. The first thing is, is that we know our communities and we should not be dictated to by the authorities that believe it's their job to look after testing regimes and models uh, singular. And, and, and I guess what we've seen living on the ground is where the bubbles of risk are and where this testing's not reaching. There needed to be an emphatic connection from the DHBs to the communities, um, sorry, to the communities to uh, roll out this testing. We have shaken it about and said that the plan that chief medical officers are working to is not right for communities. And WHO says emphatically the part of testing is to make sure you have uh, community ownership, that you have your Indigenous people owning the process. So. My criticism has been not just about the amount of swabs and dramas we had in accessing, accessing some, but also their model approach and the, the significance and importance of being able to run a very extensive, targeted, um, symptomatic and asymptomatic approach, because obviously, like in Taranaki, uh, we've got another one that's just been found after 31 days lockdown. Now, how's that possible? Wanganui's got the same. And I guess the third part of this is making sure within the testing regime, when they start to measure wastewater, because it's another way of being identifying things, that, there's, that this is all transparent and it's able to be tracked and traced. And yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's something that we're all learning. No one's an expert at Aotearoa, but we as Māori are experts at protecting our waka papa, uh, Shane. So that's, that's I guess, what, what it all comes down to. that's a very good note to end it on. Debbie Ngāri thank, thank you again you. very much for your time. Ngā mihi nui ki aakoe. Dewi Spragan is an Auckland catering, food truck and hangi specialist who had to move pretty quickly to keep on top of business during the lockdown. He closed the Māori kitchen at Auckland's waterfront and put his catering business for big events and festivals on hold. But now Rewi is ready to relaunch with Hangi Meals online and from a kai truck. The versatile presenter of Hangi Kai Masters and Kai Time on the Row is with me now. Tēnā koe Rewi. Tēnā koe, tēnā koe hoa. Well, tell me, uh, are you ready to open for business tomorrow? Always, always open, uh, ready for uh, business, mate. It's just trying to get out there and do it. And um, I think um, at the end of the day, um, a lot of uh, catering, um, uh, catering companies, restaurants are in the same boat. So, um, uh, you know, uh, yeah, it's a bit frustrating. Um, waiting to get out there and, and what it's going to look like um, as well. Um, so, yeah, can't wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Tell us, what, what preparation have you had to, to, to do? What, what, what work have you had to do to ready yourself to open uh, up for tomorrow? Yeah, so, um, yeah, well, uh, 
for a start, four weeks off um, gives you a lot of time to think and um, look at new strategies. And um, I think for Māori, um, we're um, we're really good at this. Um, it's, it's basically we're pulling the waka off the water and relashing it, and so it gives us time to actually um, look at how we um, re-tack um, in this new environment. Um, and I think. Uh, from uh, the winds down you've got to find another way and um, retack and I think um, we're good at that as Māori um, some would say that now that everyone's in panic alert um, we are um, we're looks like we're having a, a bit of uh, technical difficulty there hearing uh, Rewi uh, clearly uh, so we might just need to leave it there, but it sounds like, unfortunately, we've, we, we have to cut that there. But it sounds like if you want to hangi and you live in Auckland tomorrow, uh, Rewi will be open for business. And of course, we'll put those details uh, up for you on our Facebook page. Well, Rahui Noho Taratahi, or lockdown, has seen the best come out of us, our homes and whānau around the country. We've cooked, we've eaten, oh yes, we've eaten, lots on that point too. We've reintroduced ourselves to our neighbourhoods with daily walks and we've learnt new concepts like zui, zānanga and zinu. There are some that have used lockdown to spend time with whānau and taken the opportunity to slow down. There are some like essential workers that have never been busier. All in all, everybody has a story to tell. Now we've run a whānau competition for the past few weeks where we asked you to produce a short video to show us what you've been up to during lockdown. Here's a taste of some of the entries that you shared with us for the $1,000 Fano Fakatai Tai. Check out what we did this week. We've been doing gardening. It was hard and long, but we persevered. Superhero by staying home and saving lives. This is real from Channel 8 News coming live to you. Please stay home. Earlier today, we spoke with the Sila Fano from Ngati Kahungunu and Samoa in Ōtautahi about their video. O tēnā koutou and thank you for joining us this morning. Can we start off by everyone introducing themselves? Maybe we can start off with you, Jai. Hi, I'm Jai. I'm Kia. How are you? I'm seven years old. Kobe, do you want to wave out to us? How old are you, Kobe? Six. Six. And Luca, can you give us a wave, Luca? How old are you, Luca? Five. Five. And what about you, Mane? Can you give us a wave? How old are you, Mane? I'm three. <laughs> <laughs> Can't buy. Well, well, thank you for um, joining us uh, today. Jai, maybe you can start us off. How, was the, how have the past few weeks been for you and your family? <laughs> have you had a bit of fun? Yes. Talk to us about the video that you uh, pulled together, that, that, that you sent to us. Tell us about the video. Oh. Who came up with the idea? Yeah. Us, because we wanted to do the video. <laughs> and vlog. Why did you want to do the video? Show to show our families. Kobe, you are the, 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 the main uh, presenter in the video. You read the news. Yeah. What did you think about that? 
Mm. Did you enjoy doing that? Yeah. Did you enjoy uh, enjoy doing the job that I do? Yeah. What did you like about it? Uh, talking. <laughs> Ka pai. Zion, tell us how you fit in with the whānau and how you help with the video. Uh, I'm the stepdad, and so um, these guys are my flatmates every day. And so my job is much to facilitate the... <laughs> The their vlogging and um, help them document it and put all set up the stuff on, on, on social media. And that. So I just record them and like we film so the stuff they do every day and try to fit it into their, their lockdown news. I understand easy. that uh, it was in response to the COVID 19 daily updates, right? That the whole country uh, have become used to, but the kids found them a bit boring, so they wanted to do their own. Yeah, I think um, in terms of like what's happening across the country, the the kids we're watching TV every day and getting tired of us watching um, this adults sort of give updates about COVID. And I think it was it's quite funny because they didn't understand what was going on, and at the same time, they didn't really understand the the impact that it had on them, why they had to stay home. And so I was saying to them, look, you guys should you know do your own blog, and they were saying, yeah, we want to do our own blog and do our own news. And, and, and what did the kids, what did the Fano learn from the whole experience of doing the video and pulling it together? It's actually been quite amazing because we have a co-parenting uh, sort of bubble happening um, and we're allowed to, you know, be in each other's bubbles. So we had the other side as well. So their father would come and stay with us and be involved with the video ma uh, making. And all of a sudden after the success of the first video, the, all the three parents are producers and editors and so it's been amazing it's it's sort of you know given our family something to do and um yeah in a way it's it's helped us appreciate them more just not not, not just uh, the kids the everyday stuff but also like you know their school sex as well just who they are what they're good at and i can see uh, they're enjoying the experience too this morning well, yeah. Farno, uh, not only are you a finalist, but Jai, Kobe, Luca and Monet, you are actually the winners of our $1,000 competition. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to you all. Uh, we were just blown away. Uh, with the amazing video that we're going to see shortly. But how do you feel? And more importantly, what are you going to do with the money? Um, going to Fiji! Fiji! You might be waiting for a little bit longer to get to Fiji. But congratulations again. Thank you for your amazing video. Uh, and Zion, thank you for helping them pull together a great video, which we're going to sh uh, uh, watch very, very shortly. But thank you again for joining us this morning. We're going to show your video now. Tēnā koutou, kā ki te. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Kobe Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Boys Lockdown News. As you all know, the coronavirus is taking over our lives. But it still doesn't mean we can't have fun. This segment is called Up To. Up To. Up To. Check out what we did this week. We've been doing gardening. It was hard and long, but we persevered. We had a picnic lunch with our lunch boxes. Been checking on my watch all week. Summer's coming my way. Yeah. We went for some walks. And I can't wait to stand in the ocean Stand between my toes My girl cuddled up close now So call up all the family, them know We had them for the...
how would the kids do it out there? Are you bored? We are. This week, my papa and daddy took us to exercises. Basketball. And we had lots of fun keeping circles different. Now it's challenge time. This is for the kids. Post up the a video what you've been doing and we'll put it on our show. This is the weather for the week. Lots of lots of boring. Lots of lots of boring. Next up, I'm going to interview my brother. Yay! Hi, Lucasila. How are you? Good. What are you doing this week, Luca? Um, starting on. Did you enjoy first being done at the park? Yes. What was your favourite bit at the week? This... The thing, the spinning thing, referred to someone. Yay! Stay in your home and stay happy! And never go to anybody's house. Okay guys, see you next week for another edition of the Silla Boys Lockdown News. Yay! See you next time. Bye crew. Bye crew. Thank you for the Silla Boys. Monarchy to me. Fano Tuna. So he done a ta. Then he got my ma. Then he done a ta ka. Congratulations again to the Sila Fano, and thank you to everyone who entered the competition. We'd also like to recognise one another, one other, sorry, one other video that was sent in by Pare Puketapu on behalf of her nephew Rion Hawaiki Tuku. Rion is nine and lives in Koro Nui Stokes Valley in Wellington with his mum, older brother, and younger sister. Rion, we enjoyed your creativity so much that we're going to send you a $100 Prezi card. Rion's take on e no hoki te kainga, or stay at home, stood out amongst the entries. Let's take a look. Stay home. Stay home. Be a good citizen and stay home. Please stay home. Stay home for your own good. Stay home. Please stay home. Be a superhero by staying home and saving lives. This is Rion from Channel 8 News coming live to you. Please stay home. <gasps> Stay home and stay strong. Hey, stay home. Stay home. Bruce Lee told me to tell you to stay home. No excuses. Stay home. Don't be a sad guy, stay home. Where are you going? Stay home. Stay home. You can call your friends and family, but you can't go to the house. You can get some exercise, but stay local. You can go to the shop to get some kai. And you can use your waka when you absolutely need it. And don't be like that eager Christians, caught from people in public. Not even funnier. Bye bye. Congratulations again to Rion and the Sila Fano. And staying with the theme of Fano, we now head to the Wormsley Fano in Kirikiriroa, Hamilton. Michael Wormsley from Ngāti Kahungunu is no stranger to TV. He was a member of the Young Entertainers troupe with his sister Holly. He's now a dad with four children who have all inherited his and his wife Nellie's musical talent. I spoke to the Wormsley Fano earlier today. Tēnā koutou, Wormsley Fano, and welcome to the programme. Yay, kia ora. <laughs> Let's start off with everyone introducing uh, themselves, if you can. 
All right. I'm Mum or Nelly Wormsley. Here we have Tamati. And yeah. next we have here is this is Haven and Say your name. Taya. Say your name. Yeah. This is Harmi. It looks like they're all very shy. <laughs> and I'm Michael. Well, Mike, it's lovely to have your whānau, you, Nelly, and the whānau, the tamariki, who look absolutely beautiful, I have to say, this morning, joining us. Before we uh, talk about the song that you're going to sing for us today, talk about what lockdown has meant for you and the family. How have you found it? Yeah, honey. <laughs> well, it's definitely been um, an experience. <laughs> We've, you've had to put on lots of different hats, from the mum hat to the teacher's hat to the entertainer's hat but um we've learned lots of really good things we learned to work together look after each other you know just at the end of the day of what really matters most quite cool. um, for me i i i normally work from home anyways or have been the last year so work hasn't been super different the main thing has been the internet's been a lot slower during the day i think because we live in a community with a lot of kids and they're all at home on devices so but other than that, it's it's been great spending a bit more time with the kids, not having to go out to all the activities that you're normally doing after school. Mike, you're no stranger to TV, uh, but the Young Entertainers, of course, was a few years ago now. How would you describe that experience? Have you been uh, using that experience during lockdown? Well, yeah, that, so 20 years ago, yeah, I was on TV, did a lot of singing and uh, and tried to dance, well, wasn't very good at it, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, one of the things that we've had more time to do as a family, cutting out all those extra activities is, is more singing, so um, that's been good, and I guess given us time to prepare to have a go at, at what we're going to sing today. And we're definitely looking forward to that. Mike, tell us about the new app that you recently launched. What, 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 what's the purpose or the, uh, the, 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 the information around that, that app? Right, yeah, so, so I'm a software developer. And uh, one of the recent projects I've been working on is with a couple of Kiwi actors, uh, Rob Kipper-Williams and Alex Tarrant. Rob's actually on Home and Away at the moment over in Australia. Um, there's sort of a new Māori family on, on the show and, and he's one of that group. And because uh, the show's now on hold, I've been working with him over the past year building this app and because the show's now on hold, he's back in New Zealand and he's able to work on it full time. And and the app's called the Feel app. And basically the, the gist of it is you connect with a, a, a group of trusted friends or family and you share your emotions on a daily basis and by being aware of, of each other's emotions, you're able to better support each other. And so it's, it's, um, it's actually been, with COVID going on, it's been a good opportunity to, to push the message and, and the goals of the app. How has the app been received? Well, there's been, I mean, so up until COVID, we've just been piloting it with some some sort of men's mental health support groups and, and some equivalent groups for females and, and had lots of fantastic feedback from them. Um, I mean, I've been using the app myself with my wife just to make sure we're communicating our feelings clearly with each other. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of really positive feedback. Um, it's just early days and obviously getting, getting the app out there takes takes a lot of work. Um, but yeah, lots of great feedback and lots of great stories we've been hearing as to how it's been helping people. That, that is awesome and I'd love to continue talking about the app, but I'm looking at Harmi and he looks like he wants to go outside and use those basketballs that he's uh, playing with. Nelly, can you tell us about this, uh, the song that, you're, that, that, that the whanau are going to sing for us today? Yeah, well in lockdown we've um, had a bit more time to watch a few movies. We're fans of musicals, so we um, introduced our children to high school musicals. So they've watched all of this and um, it's really stuck to them. And I think it's, um, the song is called We're All In This Together, which he thought is quite fitting as um, a nation. That we're all in this together and we're all here to help each other out. So that's what we're going to sing for everyone. Well, it sounds like an awesome song. Uh, so the time is yours. Please uh, take the stage if you like. And uh, we can't wait to hear the song. Together, together, everyone. Together, 
together. Come on, let's have some fun together. I dare for each other every time. Together, together. Come on, let's do this right. Here and now, it's time to celebrate. Before I forget, ah, yeah, yeah. The all a dream uh, has no limitation. That's what it's all about. Everyone is special in their own way. We make each other strong. We make each other strong. We love this. together. Thank you so much the Wormsley Whanau for joining us this morning and for that great waiata. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Hami can't wait to get outside. <laughs> Stay safe. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Well coming up on tomorrow's program we look at the economic challenges the screen industry faces. Over 29,000 jobs are on the line and as always we have another Farno joining us with a special waiata. Thank you to all our guests this morning and thank you for joining us at home and in your bubbles. Koina tapatahi motenira, hekuna motenewa.